change is in the wind today. Can you feel it? I'm Roxy Zwicker, a published author and storyteller, and I'd like to invite you to take a journey of inspiration and insight with me and our special guests so that you might learn how to start creating a life with more joy, confidence, and fulfillment. The power of one is the simple thought that you are powerful enough to start creating your own destiny. Opportunities float into our lives like waves on the beach, but sometimes we are held back by fear, guilt, or doubt. What if you stopped and took one opportunity outside of your normal comfort zone? Where might that lead? Our guests on the show have chosen the road less traveled and made the decision to live their life beyond anything they could ever imagine. We will hear their personal stories about how they connected to their own personal power and how you can too, starting right here and now. This show will hopefully start the process of lifting you up and will serve as a reminder to honor the place you are at. You are exactly where you should be right now. All the tools to live a full, happy, balanced, and powerful life are right there within you. Let's refresh your body, mind, and spirit with the power of one. Welcome. Your journey begins now. Hi, welcome to The Power of One. My name is Roxy Zwicker, and I'm so excited that you're here with us today as we continue more stories of empowerment and inspiration. And today's episode's really special because I'm so excited to get out some information about Lyme disease. And our guest, Jen, has really gone through an amazing journey of not only self-discovery, but learning how to think outside of the box yeah. in order to promote healing. So if you know anybody that's been affected by Lyme disease or you yourself, I, I really strongly suggest that you grab some paper and a pen and get ready to take some notes that possibly could change your life. So Jen, thank you so much for being thank here. You. This is so exciting and what an incredible journey. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate this and I appreciate the opportunity to be talking about this and getting the word out. There's another way to deal with Lyme disease. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about how your journey started and how this all came about. Um, okay, uh, October 2012, I was doing, um, lack of a better word, fi a 5K mud run for charity. And we were crawling through long grasses and running through the woods, and I think it was then I received a tick bite. Although I didn't have a bullseye, and 60% of the people who get tick bites, they don't have bullseyes. Um, so I didn't know what was going on um, at the time. I, actually, I thought I was just fine, but two weeks almost to the day of having done that 5K mud run, that's when I came down with bronchitis. First time in 11 years I needed to be on antibiotics and thought, hmm, that's kind of weird because I've had other uh, respiratory illnesses before, but I, I didn't need antibiotics and this time I did. Mm -hmm. So um, fast forward six weeks, I'm still sick. Um, I get on another Z-Pack. Uh, fast forward into the uh, spring of uh, 2013. I never really got better from the bronchitis, but I noticed other things starting to happen. I started having some neurological issues. Um, I had my first anxiety attack, panic attack. Um, what really affected me was when I was driving in my car one day, was at a stop sign, I'm looking to the left, looking to the right, but could not marry the two images together to know what it was I was doing at the stop sign. Wow. And here I am behind the wheel of a car. So it wasn't until somebody came up and beeped their horn say, hey, lady, get going, um, that I realized wh where I was, what I was doing. So I was chalking that up to planetary energies and all kinds of other things. Um, from there, as a couple more months progressed, I wasn't thinking about Lyme at this point. I was just looking at my symptoms as an isolated thing, um, compartmentalizing each one. My symptoms after that was my hair began to fall out. From my hair falling out, I went to losing my ability to swallow. Then I started dragging my right leg. Um, and again, looking at every uh, one of these symptoms, but I'm compartmentalizing them. I wasn't looking them at them as a group saying, geez, what is going on with me? Um, at that point, it was probably in uh, July of last year, um, I, over this time, uh, work out with a personal trainer or a performance trainer. 
he, um, I walked in one day, or how about this, dragged myself in one day, oh, said to him, I don't think I can work out, something's wrong, we roll out my leg. Well, he gets out his little table and takes this performance stick, goes up the back side of my right leg and went over the speed bump. Pulled it away and he started palpating it and there was nothing there. But the moment he put the stick over again, you could actually see a bump in my leg. He took it away, stepped away from the table and said, you have something wrong with you. You need to go see a doctor. So I said, okay. At this point, I wasn't thinking I had something systemic. I'm thinking mm -hmm. there's something just really happening with this right leg. Mm -hmm. um, since I don't normally follow an allopathic model, I um, contacted um, a chiropractor up in Portland, Maine, who I'd been seeing for other issues, and uh, went up and saw him and was telling him about my symptoms and things that were happening. I said I was compartmentalizing, but I'm starting to see things um, that this might be a group of problems. And through that conversation, he got out this little machine um, uh, called a derma laser. It kind of looks like the tricorder on, on Star Trek. <laughs> um, and he dialed up the frequency of the disease, ran the laser over my body, and said, oh my God, you've got Lyme. Not only did he tell me that I had Lyme, given the assessment of this derma laser, but he could tell me exactly where. It was in the right side of my brain, in my small intestine, and sitting in um, my knee. So he, um, the first thing he tested was antibiotics. Did I need to be on Doxy? Did I need to be on Septin? Um, sure enough, my body said absolutely. So the next thing was to um, find someone who could help me because I didn't do the traditional route. I didn't go into a, a doctor and say, hey, um, can you test me for Lyme? Because those tests are so um, sensitive. There's just too many false negatives. And I'm self-employed and um, my insurance premiums are high, the, out, the outpay, so I'm, I just don't choose to do those routes. Um, so he, um, he had tested me, um, I had all these, um, I, I needed all these things like Japanese knotweed extract and um, all different other kinds of homeopathics. So he sent me home with what I needed, told me um, I needed to definitely uh, get on antibiotics. I did locate someone who um, works with other Lyme literate doctors, she's a naturopath in Portsmouth and she called up a couple of them and told them what was going on and they said, yeah, that all sounds like Lyme, put her on Doxy. So luckily, she worked with those people and she trusts me, she and I um, are colleagues in, in other ways, so um, she knew I wasn't a flake coming in saying, hey. <laughs> so, okay, that was the good news. Um, so fast forward a few weeks from that, the doxycycline immediately started a die off in my body of the Lyme disease. So what that meant was I was getting sicker. Mm -hmm. So it was even more difficult for me to walk um, or to do anything normally. And um, um, at that point, I was getting ready to go on a trip because I am a licensed massage therapist. And I have to keep up my continuing education credits, and so I'd already planned to be away for, for almost two weeks at a uh, center to do my work. Well, I had to be off Doxy to do that because that center happened to be in the sun. Um, so I got onto Septin because that's an antibiotic that also treats Lyme but allows you to be out in the sun. So I did that. I got on that antibiotic, went on my trip, came back, was still worse, um, got, was getting to the point where it was not only hard to drag my right leg in, but my left leg started getting in on the act. So my body kept slowing down. Um, now we get into October. October 16th was the day I woke up, went to get out of bed and found that I could not move anything on my body. My legs no longer worked, my upper body no longer worked. And I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm here, I'm home alone, and I can't move. So, <laughs> after really trying to muster all the will that I had, um, I was able to move this arm. It took me over two minutes, according to my alarm clock on my table, mm -hmm. to pick up my phone, to reach it, to bring it back to me, to call my niece to say, get over here, now something's really wrong. After I did that, she, um, flew over to my home, um, but what was interesting was, right after I hung up with her, I thought, call Patty Mayhew. She's the, a medical intuitive who I'd worked with before in 2011 because I had other issues, um, which are not pertinent to this. And um, 
she, she said to me immediately, when I got on the phone with her, she took me right away. She said, look, you definitely have Lyme, but let me tell you why you have Lyme. Because you have a condition with your, nervous, with your um, uh, immune system that you have mold in your system. So this Lyme was able to take root. Mm -hmm. So we need to get that mold under control so we can boost your immune system, and uh, we need to kill this Lyme off. Mm -hmm. So immediately, um, she changed wh what I was eating and how I was eating. I became gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, and nut-free. Gluten-free because um, Lyme creates um, a, a cysts over themselves. Uh, it's like a biofilm. And so when the Lyme feels like it's being assaulted, it will put itself in this little cyst to hide from your, oh yeah, to hide from your, um, from what's trying to dispose of it. So. Um, you, so you have to take gluten completely out of your diet so it gives them less of that stuff to be able to create this, the biofilm. Soy free and dairy free because those are very inflaming to the body. Um, and part of what was happening with me was I needed to get the inflammation mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. uh, sugar free is because lime likes sugar. <laughs> and so I, you stop feeding it. So I did that. And the nut free was to help me um, break through the problem I was having with the mold because so many nuts carry mold. Um, so that's the first thing she did was changed my eating. Um, from th with those constraints, I said, well, what do I eat? And she said, a drying foods diet. And I said, what's that? And it was all root vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, anything that grows in the ground. So it's sweet potato, onion, parsnips, carrots, um, daikon, radishes. That, that's all I ate. I could either use coconut oil or extra um, virgin olive oil, a little salt and pepper to taste. But that was a morning, noon, and night eating. I was no longer, you know, eggs and bacon for breakfast, pancakes, forget it. It's mm -hmm. not like that. That's, mm. you can't do that. Um, so I did that, and I was only able to eat clean meats, like turkey and lamb and chicken. Mm -hmm. um, though, but that was it. That was my diet for three months, morning, noon, and night. The other things that she recommended for me to do that I found really helpful was to um, do what's called a green drink. And it had arugula and blueberries and wild cherry, um, uh, ginger root um, tea, um, a magnesium pill, because I will tell you with this disease, it hurts to move your muscles. You need an immense amount of trace minerals in your body in order to be able to um, feed your muscles again. Mm -hmm. um, goji berries and coconut are, are also part of that mix. And I had to drink that three times a day. Mm -hmm. My first day of doing it, I thought, oh my God, I have to drink this <laughs> because <laughs> it tasted like grass. Um, but I will tell you, the next day I woke up, I couldn't be without it. It was so, it, my body craved it. I couldn't mm. get it in fast enough. I must have done five of those drinks that day. Yeah. And I just kept it going. And little by slow, um, I could feel changes happening. I, 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 the inflammation in my body, you know, it just, it, it blew up. And I noticed things starting to go down. It was still very hard for me to walk, but I wasn't waking up frozen. Mm -hmm. So getting the inflammation out of the body was key to that. Um, now emotionally, Jen, how oh were yeah. you feeling? I mean, understood your body was really taking on a lot of pressure and a lot of difficulty. But emotionally, you know, not knowing what it was and then learning what it is and so having to change you your whole lifestyle. That. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, emotionally, it was difficult because I, I, I have an unwavering faith that, that I think I was born with, that I came in with. Um, and I always go back to that. Mm -hmm. it's, it, is my, it is my anchor. Mm -hmm. While I have that, you still have to think about, okay, we're in a 3D world here. What is it that I need to do or can do in order to um, help myself? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you can't think too far ahead with Lyme. The only thing you can do, this is a, a day by day, at some points it's an hour by hour because mm -hmm. you think, oh my God, it, it, is this how it's going to be? Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to know that, you know what, you're, you're on the path when you choose to change the eating, doing the green drinks, doing the other homeopathics, as well as taking the antibiotics, and just, I had to decide that this is going to be what's going to help me. Mm -hmm. um, and emotionally through that, I, I would be reading books, um, spiritual books, mm -hmm. to keep myself going, knowing that there's a greater reason for me having this. 
Lyme disease, at the time I couldn't have told you this, but now s sitting back from it, I can see how my vibration has changed, how this disease helped release the physical density I needed mm -hmm. to get on that, that a, a higher vibrational path. Um, going through it, I couldn't have told you that. Not at all. I, I just had, I just kept my legs wrapped up, kept thinking, okay, you're going to be fine. You'll be back to work soon. Your life's getting back to, go, going to go back to normal. It's a new normal now. <laughs> 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 and emotionally, that feels great um, because I already thought I was on my path. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I already had eaten well. I wasn't, you know, big into sugars and whatnot. Um, as a kid, I didn't like dessert, so you know I never really get. I already thought I was doing mm -hmm. doing right by myself. Turns out I wasn't, and that's actually what Lyme brought to me was, you know, while you think you're okay on this path, actually, you need to kick this path and jump onto a higher path, mm. and that's um, what it showed me. I I couldn't have told you that or articulated it in at that at time, but now looking back on it, it was like, oh, and that was that plateau. When I did this, I plateaued to, I you know, raised myself up and got to a different plateau, and then I made a jump again. Mm -hmm. So it. Um, so there was, some, there was this inner strength in yeah. you that you had to summon up yes. to really get through this. Absolutely. And, and whatever. The faith was there, was the gonna, willingness, yep. but it was, you have the faith, which is the foundation I came in with. But then it's the willingness to stay on that path and not waver from that. And it was to take the actions, eating the way I'm supposed to, dr green drinks the way I'm supposed mm -hmm. to. Um, I'm also zapping. That's a whole nother out of the box thing. Mm -hmm. 2,400 uh, megahertz of uh, frequency going through my body nine times a day mm -hmm. to um, help eradicate this. Um, that's, uh, that's outside the box. You know, I tell people I'm zapping, they think I'm going through electrocution. Mm -hmm. Well, it's only 10 volts of electricity, and guess what? It doesn't hurt and kind of feels good, so mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> so little things like that. So now tell me a little bit about, I know you're outside of the box with a lot of your treatment. Yeah. What do the people around you say as, as you were going to see a medical intuitive and working with a chiropractor? <laughs> Again, that you know, instead of calling, you know, your primary care physician and say, hey, you know, I need to come in for an appointment. You were in a completely different place. Exactly. Um, okay. Um, it wasn't received very well. <laughs> okay. Family w was upset that, why aren't you going to a doctor? Why aren't you having the blood work? Thinking, well, I also don't care the same health insurance you do through your business whom you work for. So I, I don't have access to, to those kinds of things. Um, in that way. It's not that I could, didn't have access to doctors, it's the financial piece of it mm -hmm. because this disease is, can be quite expensive. Sure. Um, and the out of the box actually made it a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. And just for a quick, it cost me about $8,000 over a, th a three month period of time to get me on the path I'm on now. Mm -hmm. I know people who are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars mortgaging their houses, um, taking out equity loans. I'm not doing any of those things and really, I'm kind of from start to finish, we're talking 10 months. My ability to come back from this thing in 10 months, one, I don't know of other people who, are, who have done it, and two, also in the out of the box way that I did it. Mm -hmm. So I wanna say to folks who are just hoping the antibiotics are um, helping them, yes, and there's more if you're really gonna kick this thing. Mm -hmm. You really have to, you really have to do that. Um, um, so I, I, with the family, yes, I had lots of family saying, mm, but I, my friends who I have in the Seacoast area, in the group, I, um, um, a group of colleagues and friends that I have have been wonderful. They all understand where I'm coming from, what I'm doing. A couple times have said, geez, do you think you might want to check in with a doctor, particularly when my body was not moving and I was having to be carried from place to place or, um, uh, use some kind of a cane or a walker. Mm -hmm. um, but my resolve, and people understand my resolve. So my family eventually did come around and said, wow, you really are getting better. Well, here, here you are walking into the studio today and sitting here <laughs> and fully functioning mm -hmm. compared to where you were last year. I, I yeah. think that the proof is definitely in the pudding here. It is. It really is. Um, I can't say enough of, um, about, I, in a way, I feel like I'm a pioneer. Mm -hmm. Um, because I just have, have not heard of somebody taking this approach, 
But I have to tell you, this approach was instinctive for me. It was mm -hmm. instinctive to try the alternative therapies mm -hmm. um, first. It's not instinctive to just, the, here's my doctor and this is what they're telling me to do, so this is what I'm going to do and boy, I hope, I, you know, I'm going to get better because of this. It does, that doesn't set right with me. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel right. It's not, it's, it's, it was not for me to approach a disease of this magnitude in this way. Mm -hmm. This is a highly, highly intelligent bacteria. It imitates over 350 different diseases. People who have Parkinson's, ALS, MS, are just some of those diseases it imitates. And I am aware of some of the, those folks. For instance, in my practice, um, I have a practice on the seacoast and I um, treat Lyme patients. I've been treating Lyme patients for years for their physical symptoms. Now, I never had Lyme before, so I couldn't really appreciate what I was doing with these people. But now, having, having had it, I can really appreciate where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Well, um, those same, some of those people who are, are treating for Lyme have also been told um, that they have MS or Parkinson's. Well, th there's one client of mine who's near and dear to me, and I said to her, you know, you've watched me over these 10 months go from not being able to walk just like you did. The first time you saw me dragging my leg, you looked at me and said, I used to do that before I had Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Or I'd have some kind of a neurological thing happen. I'd be in the middle of something and all of a sudden everything goes out of your head. Mm -hmm. um, she said, that used to happen to me. And I said, well, I'd be happy to make an appointment if you want to go with me. Mm -hmm. And she did. And wow. turns out, according to the dermal laser, she has Lyme. She doesn't have Parkinson's. Eight years she's been told she has Parkinson's. She's had nine Lyme tests. They've all come back negative. She did the dermal laser, and it just went off like a disco ball. Wow. Yeah. So, so, she, so she said to me, oh, well, I'm not ready to say that I don't have Parkinson's. She said, but I'm going to do everything you tell me to do. <laughs> I said, do everything that these, these people I'm putting mm -hmm. you in touch with tell you to do. Mm -hmm. And she is, and I can already see the difference. She even said to me, I think I'm feeling clear. Her shaking hasn't yet stopped, but she says that she's noticed at times that she would have started. She hasn't. Mm -hmm. So little by slow, you know, she will come back around so long as she stays on what she's being told to do. Um, and to have the wherewithal to do it. Then, um, Patty Mayhew, who is a medical intuitive um, up in uh, Kenny, Punk, Kenny Bunkport, Maine, she, um, is, she was invaluable. She was the person who said to me, um, not only do you have Lyme, but you have the co-infection. And by the way, let me tell you why this Lyme took a hold mm -hmm. of you the way it did. Mm -hmm. um, you have mold in your system. Um, as a matter of fact, you got it between the ages of 10 and 15. Um, at a summer camp, and, and the only time I've ever been <laughs> to a summer camp was when I was 13, and I remember opening the door, breathing in them. I remember it then saying, God, it's musty and dank in here. I hadn't thought about that experience until now when, when Patty's telling me this. Mm -hmm. So, and that's more than half my lifetime ago, two, two or three times my lifetime ago. So, it just, it was something else. Um, so, getting situated with Patty in learning about what I couldn't eat, which is be gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, nut-free. Plus, there were other supplements I needed to take to not only kill the Lyme and the co-infection Bartonella, um, but to also shore up my organs because they had taken a beating. Mm -hmm. Lyme lives in you. It creates a, a, a um, well, it, it feels, in my legs, it felt like an industrious ant farm. You could actually feeling it, uh, feel it move underneath my skin. I actually had a Reiki session with the gal put her hands on my knee. The, the uh, farm, the bacterial farm started moving. I could feel it. She felt it underneath my knees. Back, she immediately took her hands off. I, I think it spooked her. And she said, what was that? And I said, oh, you've activated my ant farm. <laughs> she said, Whoa. I can feel that. And I said, I know. You can feel it, but you can walk away from it. I feel it, and I still have to live with it because I can't get outside my body. This is, this is how serious this is. Mm -hmm. You can physically feel that. Mm. It's, it's, That's very intense. It's very intense. It's very intense. When you can't walk away from yourself, when you can't get mm -hmm. away from that mm -hmm. physical body that is, is causing you so much pain, so much discomfort, it, it, and there's no way to move that feels good. There's, it's, it's so debilitating. 
So what would be a, a couple of points that you would tell somebody? Say that they, they're already experiencing some of your symptoms, but they don't even know what it is yet. Where, where, where would they start right now? Clean up your diet. Clean up, no sugar, no gluten, no soy, no dairy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely clean those things up. Then do your green drinks. Um, I had, an, uh, my green drink had nine different items in it. People can make it however they need to be. It's just mine was the most anti-inflammatory I could get for my body. Those two things are, are, are key. And I will tell you that um, I wouldn't be without my ultimate zapper now. I plan on using that the rest of my life. I can't imagine not. Wow. It, it, it does a lot. It's more than just the lime. I had other issues which it seems to have helped with. And where can people find out more about a zapper? Oh, Ultimate Zapper by Ken Pressner. Just Google it. Okay. Ultimate Zapper by Ken Pressner. So those are, those are my big things. So what's your focus now? I, I understand that you're writing a little bit about your experience. You're trying yes. to reach as many people. Can yep. you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Um, I'm putting out a little, um, what I think is going to be an e-book. Right now the working title is called uh, The Short of It because you don't have time for the long version. And it's um, just a little quick uh, about my story. Um, and then how I approached it, how I um, stepped outside the box. Um, in the beginning, I needed the allopathic help, but these are the things that really, I think, kicked it. Um, you need to have a support system, a care support system, who's going to be taking care of you and helping you and believing you. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. Um, sometimes you feel like you're the only one out there because nobody's really believing what's happening. And that's, that's the biggest shame. It really is because you, you need people who are believing you. Okay. Oh, um, so I would really recommend uh, that. And plus I'll talk about um, what my protocols were, when I did them, why I did what I did. But So it'll just be a little short uh, e-book that I'm getting out. And then I was just contacted by Women of Wellness in Portsmouth okay. to, um, to have that as a platform to talk about Lyme. So it's... Uh, it, the word needs to get out. There are there's more than one way to to deal with this, um, and I was told it would be a couple of years before I'd start be feeling, I'd start feeling good again. And I'm 10 months from diagnosis to now, and I will tell you it was only three weeks ago, and you and I had been corresponding before that time frame, mm -hmm. that the neurological piece, the the veil, lifted from me. I'm so glad you're healing, Jen. Thanks. Thank you so much for sharing Thank your story you. with us and, and all of the things that you've learned. I know it's going to help people that are out there. And can you just so. give us real quick that one statistic about New Hampshire? Oh, yes. In 2011, and thank goodness, um, the state legislature had the foresight to um, um, what was had the foresight to allow doctors to um, write prescriptions for high doses of antibiotics. Thank goodness, because th oh, about 300,000 people in New Hampshire have now been diagnosed with Lyme disease. And we have, what, a little over a million in population? So New Hampshire's number one in the country for Lyme. So I want to thank our New Hampshire legislature for having the foresight to, um, to not, because doctors, what were happening before, you were not even allowed to diagnose Lyme. Oh and if you, were issue, if you were doing high doses of antibiotics, um, uh, you were being brought up before medical review boards and doctors were losing their licenses. Wow. Mm -hmm. So big okay. changes yeah. have happened in New Hampshire. Luckily, it's on the forefront of that. Thank goodness. It is. So thank well, you. Well, great. Thank you for sharing that statistic. Absolutely. So with those high numbers, chances are you probably know someone in your family or in your circle of friends that could be a victim of Lyme disease. Yeah. Hopefully today we've been able to share some information that's going to be useful to you so that way you can be empowered and, and come back strong and, and healthy and beautiful. Thank you so much and thank, thank you, you for watching us.